Nigeria is preparing for the fourth industrial revolution. We failed the first, second, third. How lucky are we going to be this time? Um, when you see things like these, you, you know, a lot of times, you know, I read them and um, I'm not sure what, you know, to how to respond, you know, because, and it's not, you know, because I am pessimistic or I don't have any hope in, um, in, you know, Nigeria joining in, you know, with the rest of the world with growth in technology and in information technology, artificial intelligence and all of that. Um, it's mostly because um, I, I don't I don't see a lot of the effort that we're putting in um, that that gives me hope that we will be part of that fourth industrial revolution. Africa for the longest time has been playing catch up, you know, from the first industrial revolution to the second to the third. I mean, you know, people might argue that um, a lot of things started here in Africa. I mean, um, technology. A lot of knowledge was learned, you know, here in Africa, you know, from the, from the days of um, Egypt and um, from, you know, that era. Uh, but still, we, we've not been able to do so well. So um, what exactly does Nigeria hope, you know, to achieve or in what ways does Nigeria hope to join in with the fourth industrial revolution? Um, we do know How that well? the DG of the National Information Technology Development Agency is talking about a center um, establishing a center for artificial intelligence and robotics to first track development in that area. Ugh. All right, I understand we have Mr. Kinde now. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. It's our pleasure. Uh, talk to us about this uh, proposal uh, from the National Information Technology Development Agency. We're preparing for a fourth uh, industrial revolution. Um, are you optimistic about this and what do you see on the ground that encourages that optimism, if yes? Um, so I'd say the short answer to that is it's a mix of optimism and pessimism. And the long answer is um, I'm not quite as optimistic as other people may be because I understand that in order to um, get the benefits, right, of the industri of this new automation industrialization, industrialization drive that we're going after, we need certain infrastructural components in place. We spoke about this the last time. Number one is power, right? Number two is network quality, high quality internet network, you know, beyond um, uh, the current service levels that we currently enjoy. However, now that's a pessimistic part. However, I must be slightly optimistic because of the huge potential that I see in this space. I've often advocated that if India could do $150 billion in IT, that's information technology services, export revenue last year, right, which is the net sum that came back to India from the information technology services that were outsourced from outside countries to India, there's no reason why Nigeria cannot do one quarter or half of $150 billion in 2020 or 2021. Our infrastructure needs are similar, our demographics are similar, our poverty rates are similar. You know, so um, there's, there's absolutely no reason why we can't do it. So I've often advocated that uh, perhaps because of the scale and the resources that are available to government, government may be the best person, right, the best party, right, to drive such a push toward adopting technology and using it as a poverty alleviation mechanism for millions and millions of people. Uh, any other person who tries it will be a private sector player and their scale and resources will be limited. So. Oh. Um, so, so for me, it's a mix of both optimism and pessimism. So what, what, what is this, um, your take on this uh, artificial um, intelligence and robotics uh, center uh, pro proposed to help us with the agenda of uh, being actively involved in the fourth um, um, uh, industrial revolution? Um, why, did you think, why do you think it took us this long? And what's your thinking around the creation of the center? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, I think it's a step in the right direction, but I would I would deliberately reserve my congratulations, or you know, just just because going by the pattern, um, uh, you know, starting off with the first step is usually not 
enough to deliver results, tangible results that people on the streets can feel. Um, it's a good first step. Um, you know, there's, there's quite a number of high level initiatives at the policy level that are coming out of both the NIT, the Nigeria Information Technology Deve Development Agency, and the uh, Ministry of Communications, right? And I see quite a number of you know, high level policies coming out of those two agencies of the Nigerian government. However, like I said earlier, I will reserve my, con I'll, I'll reserve my good, good comments just a little bit until I start to see implementation and execution of these plans. So um, it's good that our people, our policymakers, our decision makers are thinking strategically about how we can leapfrog the, 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 we can leapfrog the economic divide, right, between Nigeria as, as, a, as a developing country and the rest of the world using technology. I have always advocated that technology is one of the cheapest ways to jump or to raise Nigeria status out of this developing, uh, developing nation status that we've been in for decades. Um, Mr. Akinde, um, I, I'm going to uh, take off from some of the things that you mentioned. You, you had earlier said there's no reason why um, Nigeria shouldn't be able to do similar, or at least half of what India um, has done uh, with them, you know, with their investments in, and of course, their earnings from information technology and, and artificial intelligence. But I, I, I want you to share your thoughts on the body language of Nigeria. Um, you earlier mentioned we haven't done very well with power, with electricity. Does it seem like we're we in any way moving in that direction? It is important, no doubt, like you've also said, that we start to look at um, IT and, and some of all of those if we're going to earn better. But does it seem like we are in any way interested in those things? We, we seem to focus a lot on agriculture and you know, little ways that as MSMEs and, and the likes, you know, to improve on our earnings. The world is moving far, far, far ahead. Um, a couple of days ago, we were celebrating electric cars in Lagos. I'm sure you must have seen that. But of course, even when you see stories like that, you still don't see and feel any excitement because you know that that's, that's really not where we are, if we're being honest with ourselves. So tell me, share your thoughts on what we really are, you know, seeming like uh, as a country today um, in, in, you know, okay. in, in midst of these conversations. Okay, good observation, good observation on your part. I'd say that much of what you observed is, is correct and uh, we can probably attribute it to, uh, there's, no, there's no polite way to say this, we can probably attribute it to just the lack of understanding of the space, right? In the demographic of people who generally um, make decisions on behalf of the 200 million Nigerians, right? Um, I'll use the example of I use a recent runaway success story of Paystack, right? Being acquired by Stripe. One of the biggest wins I have noted with some of my colleagues in the startup ecosystem uh, in Nigeria is that one of the biggest wins of that incident, that epoch event, right, for us is that finally people like us now have a reference use case or a reference case that we can use to convince old money, right, deep, deep pocketed people in Nigeria and by extension in Africa to invest in African startups. That event was a lesson for all of us that did it have to take a foreign investor who's not based here? They, they, they took their time for upwards of two years, about three years, right? And did the research and were studying this company, you know, put, put them on performance metrics, study their progress through those metrics, and finally justify the decision to, you know, acquire them for, you know, whatever they acquired them for, you know, but we know upwards of $200 million. What that has done is that it has, it has finally given um, validation to the theory that we, that we have always had, that the, the people who really, really decide where major tickets, major projects go because of, one, their influence with the decision makers, two, the kind of resources that they have you know, in terms of uh, magnitude of resources, deep pockets, 
generally do not understand the one IT space to the technology venturing space. And these are the same quote unquote demographic of people who are in decision making, whether in the ministries or in the you know in the in the other in the other bodies. So uh, back to your question. Again, it's it's more of simple lack of understanding of the space. Agriculture is is easier for them to understand, so they've been able to more emotionally and personally connect with initiatives that project and what's the word um you know accentuate you know help enhance agriculture and its possible benefits now that we have quote unquote success stories like pasta hopefully we will have better audience to be able to sell what we have been seeing you know you know in our dreams and in our visions and say technology can deliver but the same returns on investment that you have seen that agriculture can deliver. And I dare say even more, sometimes two times, sometimes three times in terms of returns on investment. However, how does it work? Consult with us. Let's help you. Let's show you the roadmap. Let's show you how to build these things. You know, but like I said, many times it's just a, it's just, it feels like sometimes you're talking to someone and you're not able to connect with that person. That's, you know, like I said earlier, there's no, there's no polite way to say it. That's exactly how, how, that's 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 the that's the that's the high level uh, situation that we're facing. It's also, you know, did I answer your question? A great time. I think yes, you did. It's also a great time to because you, you know now we're talking agriculture. It's also great to uh, point out that uh, investments in technology would also greatly improve on um, our output with regards to agriculture. You know, but we're still stuck in the age of moving cattle and 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 you know livestock and and whatnot in the most archaic. Um, manner. Um, but until we get to that point where we understand the need and the use of technology in, in these aspects, we probably would never be able to go um, as far as possible. Um, I, I want you to speak also on how much difference Nigeria can be in the next decade. If we start today, and from now we're having this conversation to invest more in the infrastructure that will assist our um, acceptance into the fourth industrial revolution. In what ways can Nigeria look different in the next decade, in the next two decades maybe? Right now we need to, of course, build on our educational infrastructure uh, to fit in, into there. There's a lot that we can achieve with healthcare, with, you know, with security also. But if we start today, where can we be by 20, you know, 40, maybe. Okay, thank you very much. Um, at the risk of sounding patronizing, I like the way you frame your questions. Um, uh, I can use, to cut straight to the answer, let me just use Dubai as an example, the United Arab Emirates and Dubai in particular, right? Um, even if any Nigerian has never been to Dubai, the pictures, the, the visuals, right, that we've seen, you know, talk less of actually visiting, visiting there physically, demonstrates a good use case, a good reference use case for what Nigeria can be in 20 years. I, like, I also like the fact that you used a, a time span of 20 years because I made some observation recently that Nigeria has been making oil money for no less than 60 years. Dubai started making oil money about 22 to 24 years ago. And look at what they've accomplished. So if you if you have used in your question to me 20 years, this is exactly if we if we start to make the right high-level policy decisions, put the right infrastructure in place, Dubai is a good enough example. Obviously, you know, we can then take that one 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 level higher by even learning the lessons that Dubai has fallen into, you know, so that we don't have to go through the same steep learning curve that they went through and even exceed their performance in 20 years. But at the very least, Dubai's current state of one, technological advancement, two, economic advancement, three, um, status, right, in the community of nations, you know, in the sense that, you know, when you mention Dubai, you know that you're talking about a top destination city worldwide, right? I'm, Along those three parameters, those are things that we can aspire to achieve in, in 20 years if indeed we start to take the right decisions now. So, that's, so, so that brings me back to the point I made earlier about the high-level decisions that I've seen coming out of the office of the, of the, the NIP, the Nigerian Inter Inter Information Technology Development Agency. 
um, they, they, they are some really, really, really important things. There's something about blockchain, there's something about this one now, about AI, robotics, and, and, and emerging technologies generally. And those are very, very important things. I just really hope for two things. One, a, a pragmatic private sector-like execution and continuity of policy so that, you know, you know, when the next government and the next appointee comes, comes to that office, they won't throw out all of these things and start afresh. Yeah. You know, so hopefully, like you said, if we can do the right things now, um, we can look like Dubai in, an, in, in 20 years well, and you, even more. You, that, you, can, that can be the minimum that we can look like. You also use the pay stack as an example. And for a lot of young Nigerians who are interested in information technology, uh, that was a, 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 a very big boost um, an encouragement for a lot of them. Um, what is the space currently like? Um, do we have more and more young Nigerians pouring into that space? Um, what, uh, you know, is the, of course, we already know that there's, you know, not that much support from the government, but from the private um, uh, sector, is there a lot of people who have now started to see value? You mentioned how important it is. Um, is there a lot of people who have started to see value in investing? Is there a possibility of crowdfunding certain investments? I know a lot of them, you know, off the top of my head, but of course I wouldn't want to mention names um, in, in this interview. But I know a lot of young people who have invested a lot of time, finances, and effort into information technology, trying to build, you know, little things from, from, the, from the scratch. Um, so what is the sector currently like amongst, you know, all those people? Okay. All right. So, um, so, so there's two, uh, two major aspects kind of embedded in your question. There's the, there's the IT slash technology sector, you know, uh, and then there's the startup sector. Sometimes they are intertwined. Sometimes we can use them interchangeably, uh, but, but there are those two aspects. Um, yes, like, yes, you rightly noted, there has been a major boost, right, in confidence across all the players in these, in this, might I use the word, ecosystem. Um, from the, from the entrepreneurs themselves, which are the, which are largely, largely the youth, right, young Nigerians who feel, who have skills, who have technology skills, and feel confident that they can build the next Google, Yahoo, um, you know, Microsoft, you know, and who really feel confident, you know, as we've seen, Paystack slash Stripe, you know, who really feel confident that uh, uh, if not constrained by geographical boundaries, they could really, really, really do serious uh, uh, things. All right. But uh I'd like to note that beyond the entrepreneurs, beyond the entrepreneurs, they're quite... Other players in this sector are also experiencing increased confidence. So in the last you know, two weeks, three weeks to one month of the announcement of the pace track of, 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 of the pace track deal, I have personally seen an uptick in the number of expressions of interest in Nigerian startups, Nigerian technology startups. You know, uh, 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 I have some newsletters that give me daily bulletins of investments in the African space. And I've seen the, I've seen this, you know, I've seen, I've seen a general optic, right, in interest, both locally and uh, from foreign, from foreign, from All right, I, I guess that that's a signal that we should indeed wrap things up at this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Idowu Akinde, uh, for joining us on The Breakfast and talking to us about our preparation ahead uh, so we don't uh, get caught up in the losses we experienced in the first, second, and third Repub um, industrial revolution. The this Republic. is the fourth industrial <laughs> revolution. revolution. Mr. All Akinde, right. thank you once again. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.